Hello, Josh. Hello, how are you? Hi, so good. Thank you so much for joining me on Inside the Industry today. For those that are do not know you, they're blissfully unaware for some reason. Joshua De La Cruz <laughs> is an actor, performer, singer. He, I met you at Aladdin on Broadway. You were an ensemble, That's but right. also you undercovered, or well, I guess you know, undercovered. What is it called? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. What, what is it called? It's it's um. Oh, I know it. I know it. I was on Can Broadway you, once. Um, now I'm like uh, understudy. Understudy. Thank oh you. God, I'm like yeah. undercovered. As soon as you said undercovered, as soon as you said undercovered, I was like, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> I know. Shows how much yeah, I, I know. Good. Yes, understudy. Oh, Aladdin, though. Yes, you're like big that's win, right. and you actually did go on a couple times before all the whole yes. big shutdown. You did get to have your moments, yeah, and you yeah, did yeah. a beautiful job. That's right. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love it. No, and that's how we really got to know each other, which is great. I was doing hair and makeup on there. You were working. We also got to play a little bit for those that don't know as well. You also have your hand in some photography. So we played with some that's headshots. Right. You are quite the multi-talented right. artist, which I love that I, about you. I, I, I can't sit still for too long. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see during the interview, like I can't, I literally can't sit still for too long. <laughs> uh, I'll just be shifting around. But yeah, no, when I was on Aladdin, I, I took it as kind of a, um, uh, what is it? A, uh, a paid uh, a paid scholarship to kind of explore other things. So, you know, and not, we didn't have a lot of time, as you know, when you're on, uh, when you're on a show that's eight times a week, um, you barely have enough time, personal time. Uh, a lot of the time is just spent um, getting ready for the show or uh, or healing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. whatever whatever time is left over, you just have uh, with your family. Um, right. So oh my God. I really use that time to just kind of explore and thank God mm -hmm. you were there to, to help yeah. with, um, to, to lend your talents with hair and makeup. It was such, it's such oh, a it's switch. So Cause when I started, photography I was doing headshots and everybody came in and did their makeup so you kind of got different yeah. levels of um on camera ready which yeah. is uh you know I didn't realize how important that was until I started editing and mm. then when you came in and did it and I was like oh <laughs> the pictures are the oh. pictures are already like good to go they're beautiful so oh, um, yeah, oh, thank it, God. It, it was such a, a great learning experience and you're so awesome to work with uh, on Aladdin and then also personally on um, on any photo projects that we did. So uh, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm pumped. That. Oh my God, well, literally right back at you. Your energy is just like totally like contagious. It's like crazy, it's wild, it's infectious. You just, you are constantly, and I know I won't blanket that as like life because that will be unrealistic, but you really do exude it all the time, especially on the job. And when you're in front of people, you just create such positivity around you. I love that about you. And it actually segues us oh, really you. nicely into your new new sound role, which is great. You went from Aladdin and we're here to talk a lot about your, I just think this is so major. To me, when you booked this gig, I was like, oh, first of all, it makes all the sense in the world. But when you booked, and, <laughs> and it's crazy to say, cause your name in the series is Josh. So Josh as the yeah. new Steve in Blue's Clues and You on Nickelodeon Junior, right? It's so crazy. Yeah, it's 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 wild because, uh, you know, I watched the show when I was younger. I, w I was, I think seven at the time when I was watching it with my little sister. I Had still remember all the things. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember the pink rug in my in my aunt's um, at my aunt's house because she was the one with cable. So whenever we'd sleep over, we'd pretty much always just watch cable from like once we got up there until we left. And Same. so every morning was spent watching Blue's Clues. And so that you know, like to look uh, at it now, I I already had my dream job when I was on Broadway, right? And I then um, well, when I I was like, oh well, what is? I wish there was something else that I could do that would help kids, that would help people. Um, Stop while still still using the things that I was uh, that I had learned along the way. And then yeah. uh, this audition for Blue's Clues came along and after every callback, and it's so funny because the Mr. Rogers documentary came out around the same time that my final callback went. Oh and God. after I saw that, I was like, oh, this is the thing that you were waiting for. And so it, oh. it, was, it was perfect timing and so lucky, yeah. 
Oh, I love that moment for you. I had no idea too. It's such a harmonious thing when you really do. I feel like, especially actors, artists in general, it's like when you're really, yeah. you're doing something you already love. Like you mentioned, you kind of, you booked that gig. Broadway yeah. is such the pinnacle of theater. It's the highest level that you can achieve. And on top of that, you know, you're understanding a lead role. It's like, you're, you're hitting some high marks here as far as actors and their dreams. You're a singer performer. So you're hitting all these notes. And then to be able to find a job that is so lucrative to still be doing all the things you want to be doing. I had no idea you wanted that segue with specifically youth and like helping out kids because it really was, I mean, yeah. like you said, we both grew up in it. I remember watching it in the mornings avidly and what it does for you as a kid, but I think it's really powerful. I want you to take us kind of through that audition process and going through it. It's wild because it is yeah. very special. I don't think people realize not only just the iconicness of it, but the fact that the network yeah. is Nickelodeon and that's, huge oh, in and of oh itself, as far as our 90s babies go yeah. that's like I mean yeah. royalty yeah. um and then also just the fact that you were also I mean you're a person of color you're a, a Filipino American and yeah. it's like to be able to be that role and add that representation to something has that's mm -hmm. been so long like received and well received from children to now kind of put it in those eyes I just think grounds it yeah. out even more so so I kind of want you to take me through that yeah. process of when you auditioned and I guess how long it was and then when you got kind yeah. of news when was that for you yeah so it's it's a very very roundabout story i mean yeah. we, so i never saw myself as a as a tv actor i've always wanted oh. like, i love tv i love film i love tv um yeah. but i never thought that i would ever be on tv i never saw anybody on television that i that mm. i um connected with that i i um related to you know it was always bad guys foreigners the butt of the joke things like that mm -hmm. um and the only reason i thought theater was a viable option was because i knew of these actors doing amazing roles like really incredible work like salonga bd wong um mm -hmm. and then um lou diamond phillips like that that really and and just all all of the actors uh that i knew of on um on broadway jose lana that, that's another one uh, yeah. And so I saw that for myself. I was like, okay, I see myself there. I can, I can do that. I think I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so then when I got to Aladdin and I, I, I was with the show for just about five years and I loved yeah. every minute of it. I yeah. loved going to work. I loved working uh, with the people. You know, that's one of the easiest ways to stay positive is just to be, yeah. um, it's to be surrounded by good people. And I, ha I had the fortune of being surrounded by good people. So how could I not be house. positive? Mm -hmm. it yeah, is. it's, it's an amazing house. house, you know? Uh, working on Aladdin was one of the, the best gifts I've ever received. And uh, I worked hard for it, um, mm -hmm. but the show wasn't the reward, the people was, you know? It, it's yeah. just the building. Um, totally. And, but I, I miss those people dearly. And I, I love, uh, I love those people. They, they, they molded me into the person that I am today. And because I was with them, because, um, Aladdin is an extremely diverse cast mm -hmm. and everyone was so confident in who they were and being unapologetic and, uh, about it. And then before Aladdin, I was with Here Lies Love, mm -hmm. which is a musical about, um, uh, Imelda Marcos and her time in the Philippines. And so I was there with the Filipino cast. And yeah. because I was with an Asian theater community and then a Filipino theater community, and mm -hmm. then with this diverse group of people, they were able to help me be confident in who I am as a Filipino American actor. Um, mm -hmm. Because when I graduated college, I didn't, I, I never wanted to be seen as Asian. Uh, mm. whenever I went into an audition room, you know, wow. I just wanted to be ethnically ambiguous and I'd go into r rooms and I would be like, please don't see me as Asian, don't see me as Asian, don't see me as Asian, which is problematic on so many different levels. Right, I was going to say, but, the problem, but I, like, hear story. Like, I get you. No, I, it's honest. It's yeah. honest. Yeah. I mean, there are like, when I went to school, when I graduated school, there were like five shows on Broadway uh, with Asians in it that were about Asians. Um, mm -hmm. and they were all like historical. They were yeah. all, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was about strife. Um, yeah. there was just no, like every man, every day story, every person story. Um, yeah. so I wanted more, I wanted to do more. I wanted yeah, to, you to didn't play see that like, mold, right. Totally. I didn't see that. 
So I tried to fit in that box, but that's, a, how could you, as an actor, you're supposed to be honest and you're supposed to be vulnerable. So how are you supposed to really be honest or vulnerable if you're not honest about who you are, about your identity? Um, oh, yeah. And that's something that I, I, you know, I want to impart to, if there are any actors out there, and you could take this beyond acting, like yeah. don't worry about your type, worry about who you are. Cause you know, mm. if you keep trying to fill a type, you're only going to turn yourself into a generic actor. So just figure out who you are and then how would you play that role? Um, yeah. And if you get it, you get it. And you get to be your truest self. And if you don't yeah. get it, there are going to be a million other auditions. Um, yeah. And hopefully with, with enough luck, um, mm -hmm. that will line up for you. Um, and so I wow. was, you know, I was blessed and fortunate enough to have that luck and have that hard work meet. And mm -hmm. in the middle, I got to work with incredible artists, not just actors, but um, designers and uh, yeah. people in wardrobe uh, and crew that were so confident in who they were mm -hmm. that that really impacted me. That when I was in Aladdin and I was exploring all these different things, photography, uh, right. I finally realized like, oh, well, why, why, why can't you be on TV? You know, and, and, and mm -hmm. knowing that because I'm like, Oh, the problem isn't that I'm Asian. The problem is that there aren't Asian roles. But now mm -hmm. because progress is happening, yeah. you know, it's slow, it's frustrating. Um, yep. And I can only speak for myself as an Asian man. I can't even, you know, it's multiply that by a gajillion for if you're a woman and if you're a woman of color, like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. Totally. So me as an Asian man, realizing like, yeah, this is, um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try and I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, that is in huge part because of um, the people that I work with and, yeah. the, and because of my wife, um, mm -hmm. you know, who's, who's also an actor. And so uh, I was in Aladdin for five years and I realized like, oh, I want something more. And mm -hmm. then I got the audition for Blue's Clues. And so yeah. I auditioned for Blue's Clues. My, my buddies, Josh Drake, um yeah. uh jamie uh andrew we they were in my pod at aladdin mm -hmm. and they all helped me uh learn my lines and uh we had a good laugh and everybody downstairs we had a good laugh because it was like oh it's blues blues there was a point yeah. in the middle of the show we all started singing the mail time song because it has affected oh. and impacted so many different generations and it was a beautiful really? hilarious moment I'm sure we got in trouble because we sit directly underneath the stage. Um, yes. And, and um, so I went in for my audition and I didn't hear back for a month. I didn't a hear back month? for a month. Yeah. And I was like, you know, another one bites to dust. Fine. No. And then I got an email a month later from my agent who said, yeah, I guess this is still happening. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. And so I went in again. Uh, and this time it was with, it's like, nothing dissimilar from what I'm used to. Like there were producers there and then it was just me. I just came in, I did my songs and stuff. Then I got notes. So like, you got to call, you, you're, you're going to be testing. I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, and they're going to set up a call just to talk over notes with the casting director. I was like, oh, cool. I've never experienced this before. Oh my um, God, and then and so the following week, oh, it's more and more. Yeah. yeah and so like, the following week, it keeps building and building. And so now we're in the test. And so I show up with sides, the same sides. Um, I think they added maybe. And then um, it was full hair makeup. Um, it was like a pseudo costume. So I was wearing like a blue t-shirt uh, and jeans. Um, mm -hmm. And then there was a director there, uh, there were producers and it was in Nickelodeon. If you've ever had a chance, if you're an, ever, if you're an actor, one of the greatest places to audition is Nickelodeon because you sit, oh. you go into this gigantic building and when you can audition in person, it is an amazing experience. You wow. go into the Viacom building, you go up to like the 27th floor. So you mm -hmm. have this amazing view of the city. You go in through the doors, it says Nickelodeon. You sit on these bright orange, yellow couches while you're watching TV, while you have this amazing view and oh. it's the greatest audition experience ever and everybody's just so sweet and and, and kind um, and i'm sure it feels super so, surreal that like it kind of starts clicking in your head like oh this is like nickel like whenever i'm in a big setting like that or even at like instagram studio yeah. like just when you're in that environment you're like 
okay yeah. it's feeling real real yeah. <laughs> it feels like yeah it's exciting it's exciting it's exciting you know in movies they have it like when you're auditioning for a big broadway show you're auditioning yeah. in the theater like that doesn't happen never you're happens. in like a crowded hallway hallway you become a sponge to all of the anxieties that are going through that hallway yeah. in this small room it's 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 a completely different like experience exactly um, <laughs> yeah. but it's 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 terrifying and so now like now you know they're asking me like do you want a water do you, can i get you anything it's like oh uh no i think i think i'm good <laughs> and so okay. i go in there's a camera there i'm mic'd up there are lights there are drapes that, you know and i know people are behind there i just don't know who's behind there and so i'm oh working God, with the really? director and he gives me notes yeah 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 and um i'm nervous and i he's he starts to leave right and then he turns around like oh yeah steve do you have any notes for josh and i'm like oh yeah and then emerging from the curtain you already got it i didn't get it until he like a second after he started talking he comes down he's like oh hey josh you know great job and i'm like oh hi steve and then i realized you're you're steve, steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh my heart <laughs> and i got I so nervous it. i got yeah. so i got so nervous yeah and um oh that, and and he continued to talk and immediately i flipped and i felt like i belonged i felt empowered oh. it, it's an amazing feeling he's he is such a generous generous person um wow. and uh he gave me notes and it was great and then uh I, I finished that experience it was like a whirlwind and then i didn't hear back again for another month i think they put me on hold wow. and then i was like okay and then they put me on hold for another month and I was like, okay, well, you know, this is, this is uh, exciting. Right. And then two weeks later, after that second hold, they're like, we're going to bring you in for a final test. No way. And, uh, oh my God. So the entire process all over again, but this time there were four people, uh, there, I was one of the four people and, um, I had some notes and, uh, I went in, I remember I was so nervous that I, I didn't want to miss the, the audition. I didn't want, I didn't want any stress. So I found a hotel that was down the street and I found it on the app. What's, what's that app that you get the night before? Oh, um, or, or something like that. It's uh, not Airbnb hotel what is it? or something like that. Oh, okay. That, yeah. Hotel it's like, it's, I think it's, I think it's like hotel tonight. It's like such a sketchy name. You're probably um, right. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, so I got the hotel so that it was like affordable because you know New York City yeah. hotels are crazy. Honey. Um, mm. So then I got the hotel. I was a block away from the audition. I you know I prepared. I had my guitar. Um, wow. And like I'm not like when I started the show. I'm not like a guitar player. I play the guitar for my wife and for my dog. Yeah. I don't perform. <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay, I have to learn the song and everything. Um, and then I went to the audition. It was great. You know, mm -hmm. I was vibing. Uh, and then I left. And then I remember calling my agents and, and, oh. and um, they're like, how, how, how'd you, how, how do you think you did? I was like, I did great. I, I, you know, I felt like, I felt like I left it out all on the table. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I just, I'm just so bummed cause I, I, I was really wanting to play the guitar for them. Um, because I had this entire scene yeah. uh, about how I would use the song. Um, and they're like, well, why don't you throw it on tape? And so I'm in my hotel room, I'm re getting ready to leave. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So then I recorded it on my phone. I propped my phone up on like something. And, um, it was Steve's goodbye song. Oh. Um, but the way that I had filmed it. Uh, I, I've actually never talked about this before. I'm realizing now is that, yes. yeah, I, um, I filmed it like I was talking to the home viewer, the kid at home, and wow. it was about practicing the guitar and about how, like, sometimes I get nervous, but the best way to do it is to practice. Will you help me practice? And so I sang the song and then I thanked them. And then, so I made this own little scene that I improvised and then yeah. I sent that to, uh, my agents. My agents were like, this is great. We're going to send it to them just mm -hmm. to view. Um, and so, uh, they viewed it and, um, again, I didn't hear back <laughs> I didn't hear, again, okay. I, I didn't hear back. And so I was going on my, uh, my wife, Amanda was doing, a, uh, the Norwegian cruise for, um, for Jersey boys in Alaska. So I left. 
for two weeks to go there. And if you've ever been on a cruise, when you're at sea, you don't have any cell service. Oh my God. And if you've ever been to Alaska, whenever you're not at sea, you don't have cell service. <laughs> Amazing. So, this is perfect. <laughs> uh, it's fantastic. And so on the first week, I, I out of habit, Amanda was sleeping because she had a show the night before. Out of habit, I brought my phone with my book just to have coffee out on the deck. And then I'm, I literally sat down, started drinking my coffee, and then I picked up my phone, and I saw somebody was calling me. And we're we're not at port. We're we're in the middle of the uh, we're 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 traveling. Oh and God. I'm like, oh. And they said nine one seven. I was like, oh, this might be. It's like this might be it. Uh, and then I pick up, and the rest is kind of like I don't really remember. It's just kind of like a oh. blur. I know somebody was like. Josh, you know, uh, you got the part. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Uh, and then for an hour and a half, I had mm -hmm. full cell service to call my family, to call my to call Amanda, to call my agents. Um, and then the following week, now get this, same part, I timed it out uh, around the same time, same, oh. you know, place, no cell service whatsoever. Uh, and yeah, it was just, it was just so, so lucky. That's uh, that I was literally able to get that call. wild. I have never yeah. listened. I've heard yeah. a lot of, especially on this podcast, we've heard a decent amount of like booked it, you know, <laughs> stories. I have never, Josh. Yeah. And not only the thing too, first of all, that just, it gave me chills and it's so exciting because people don't realize, I mean, what we see in the movies and just the people that don't, they aren't with you during the process. They just hear, hey, I auditioned. And then, you know, time goes by so fast and they hear, I booked it. They don't realize the interim. They don't realize the months of waiting, the re-auditioning, the split moment seconds that an agent might say, hey, yeah, throw in a tape of you playing guitar, like out of the blue so that you could have yeah. this little extra oomph to you. There's just so many yeah. levels that can set you apart. A lot of luck, pure talent, timing. It It's just so serendipitous how that came about. Like, that's crazy to me. And so deserved because if people have watched you in it, oh, you, you are so lovely major shout out to your makeup artists they make you look so matte and beautiful and it's wild and it looks Carrie like Vaughan! <laughs> yeah. beautiful job it's insane but like you just it's so good and how you do it which no wonder like steve and them are all just like you deserve it it's just wild because you i don't watch it and go he's trying to be steve so exactly to the note you said earlier about being yourself it's josh which i love that they kept your name i think that's great does that make it yeah. easier for you on set <laughs> It does. It does. And, you know, you know, to speak to, to what you said about, you know, identity, um, yeah. it, it's worked out great that my name is Josh and yeah. Steve and Donovan Patton, Donovan Patton played Joe, his brother uh, yeah. on the show as well. And they, they came to me when we were getting ready to shoot and they said, they're like, Hey man, I don't know if you, anybody ever told this to you, but we want you to know that we don't want you to feel like you have to replicate Mm. anything that we did we love you we love what you're doing so we want you to celebrate you and explore your character yeah. um so don't ever feel like you have to do anything like we did or if there are ever any notes like do it like this don't ever feel that pressure and wow. you know when they said that and when I got to watch them work because mm -hmm. you know it's my first tv gig I'm, I, I'm so nervous right right um they were just playing and I was like, oh, I know how to play. So just play. Oh uh, and, you know, it's, it's I, again, I work with such amazing people that I, I, yeah. I, I'm so happy to be on set every single day. I love that. Honestly, though, and it says a lot about you, though, too, Josh. I say that often on this podcast, but it's because I'm so blessed to bring on people like yourself and such light and fun and just sincere people and what they do in their craft. But I feel like uh -huh. you are also, like you said, you're a product of in your environment, but you also, you do pull what's around you, what you're giving out. So the people that you are naturally around that yeah. you're so thankful for, you yourself offer that. I'm sure many people can speak to it. I know I can. You know, anybody I've come in contact with that has gotten Thank to work you. with you says the exact same thing, that it's just, you are blissful and wonderful to work with. Um, I am very, oh, very you. curious about, I mean, your co-star yeah. is literally CGI. <laughs> How, yeah. how is that? How is it working? I mean, for going from Broadway to really doing not only yeah. in, your audience is in person, but now we're in TV land. So now it's different. And our audience isn't in front of us. And on top of it, the people and everything around me is not real. How do you, how did you adapt yeah. to that? How do you feel with that? So, 
I've, I've had a lot of time to meditate on this because yeah. it, it's something that people ask a lot and I've never really had a good answer for it I don't think yeah. uh, because all you get is a if you're if I'm lucky I'll get a tennis ball but most times it's just like a mark on the floor um, because what happens is it's a 2D animation mm. but we're shooting in 3D so you're trying to mix two different perspectives and depending on what lens is on the camera mm. it shifts things so like if I were to look at you uh, here um, yeah. It might not necessarily look like I'm looking at you. I would have to look at you like, like this, and then like this. So wow. it's it's just different because it, the the lens will distort things. Now that being said, we've been doing if you if you're a theater actor and yeah. if you have done theater in any capacity, mm -hmm. um, especially as a student, you all you get is a black box theater if you're lucky. And then your imagination, you don't get props, you don't get costumes, you don't get Ooh, set, gosh. you just have your imagination. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing this our entire lives. And that's what yeah. I had to remember. It's like, oh, you know how to do this? I've done this. This is, <laughs> this is like, yeah, we've all done this. The only <laughs> thing is that now you have like very well-paid people telling you that it has to be so specific because mm -hmm. the animation has to exist so like this wouldn't work because my hand is out it has to be like this so naturally this feels weird but on camera mm -hmm. it might not look weird when the animation's in there so it's it's just recalibrating but if you're a theater actor and you've gone to school or if you, you know how to do this it's just imagination yeah. if you if you've ever been a kid you know how to do this I love that. It's very special. It's cool because honestly, I think people don't realize it's such a niche market to be booked in that arena. I, I at least think that I could be wrong in a sense, but you think about, my God, there really is a ton of children's television where there's a lot of people, mm -hmm. real life people that are playing these characters mixed around other characters. God, I think of like the, the what are they, the Wiggles and like all these other different people who do yeah. sing-alongs and other things. And it is extremely yeah. theatrical, you know what I mean? And it's super mm -hmm. playful. Um, that being said, yeah. I'm assuming, I mean, your role daily is this exuberant, super fun, happy-go-lucky guy. And if that's what you have to put on every single day, I mean, I, won't, I don't know your actual schedule, but I'm assuming Monday through Friday, just about most times, right? So, yeah. and endless hours. So at that, and you're constantly putting that out what is it like for you in a day-to-day -day when you are having a bad day or there is stuff out in the world where you're being affected by it negatively? What do you do to constantly oh, yeah. maintain that positive space to, to live in that character as Josh for Blue's Blues? Yeah, that's totally fair. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. this year has been so difficult, but right. it has been so much easier for the simple fact that Amanda, my wife, and my dog are up here with me. So... Uh, usually I'm up here by myself for like months at a time and then I'll go back. So I'm constantly in a state of homesick. Yeah. Um, but whether uh, I'm here by myself or whether Amanda's here and, uh, and Ollie's here, um, you still have to take time for yourself to recharge because, you know, when you come home, you have to be there for your, your family because right. they will ult they're ultimately what matters. And right. so what I've done and what I've started doing um, is that I'll, ha I'll wake up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I take, like Josh time is waking up at 4.30 during the work week. So I'll wake up at 4.30, I'll have my coffee, uh, mm -hmm. I'll make coffee, I'll get things ready for the day. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll sit and then I'll, I'll, I have a journal that I don't necessarily journal, but I mm -hmm. write down everything that I need to do for the day. Um, and then that always ends with, you know, like goal, like personal goals for, for my family. So, uh, don't multitask when you're, when you're at home with Amanda, uh, mm. and Ollie, um, you know, don't do these things and, mm. or, or work on these things. Right. Um, in a positive and then way, I'll yeah. do yoga. Exactly. Mm. I'll just put it in a positive space and then I'll do yoga and then I'll work out and then I'll get on the elliptical. Um, mm -hmm. and then I'll take a shower and then I'm out the door by, uh, what time do I have to be on set? Seven. I I'm out the door by seven forty, and then wow. I'm on set. I I'm, I'm in the makeup chair by eight. Um, if, uh, my makeup artist, Carrie Vaughn is listening, I'm in the chair by like eight, 10. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's trying. He's trying. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm really trying. And then I, uh, 
and then I I'm on set at nine, and uh, uh, we 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 cut out around like five thirty, uh, five thirty six. Wow. Um, but on top of all that, Full day. And, and you know, cultivating your relationship at home, um, like it's been so so uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still other work to be done. So then I also was I just started going back to therapy, which is something that I've been oh, missing um, so so dearly. You know, yeah. it's yeah, it's yeah. so important to go to therapy. Um, and most times, like I don't even talk about anything negative. <laughs> you know, Isn't I just talk wild? about what's going on. But it helps just yeah. to. It's a weird space. First of all, recap on your routine immensely. I'm I'm really thinking. The older I get, the more I realize how much. And, and honestly, even being pandemic, how much routine really does mean to us as humans, regardless if that yeah. means it's strict every day, it doesn't have to be the same thing every day, but structure. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes back to even our childhoods. Mm -hmm. Kids really like structure. We like knowing places we need to be, how something's going to go. It kind of helps soothe anxiety in a way because you know what to expect. You know that this is what I'm going to do. And you kind of, and then when life throws you all the curveballs, well, you have this kind of you know, routine set up. And then if things move and adjust, you're able to ebb and flow, but agreed with all of that. It's yeah. nice to have that structure, set the time aside for yourself um, and adjust it when and how you need to, when life changes, which is great that you've set that up for exactly. yourself because I, I haven't personally gotten to it, but I do know how much it means, especially the morning routine, even just those couple of mm -hmm. the minute, the hour, half hour you get to yourself just to breathe, yeah. set apart you know your intentions for the day do what you can your best and yeah. then go through it is really beautiful and I do love that I'm very happy that you're able to be so close to your family now because I think people don't realize that a lot of the time with our job I mean you just saw your hours yeah. I'm on set from x time to x time which means I'm literally without for all those hours that is a long yeah. long time to constantly be without your family or dear friends um, it's an adjustment for them. It's an adjustment for you. I don't think people always realize that in when we're booking these roles or when we're out doing our, our livelihood and our fun jobs, that there are fun and rewarding, but there are sacrifices, minor sacrifices, you know, here and there, but also can be large yeah. depending on how it, you know, weighs with your partner or friends and family. So kudos. And I'm glad you and Amanda yeah. are killing it. A beautiful couple. I love Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the dog can't fail to mention the dog, Ollie. So, oh yes. Uh, Ollie's the center of everyone's universe and, and, and he deserves it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And now, so you've been running blues clues has been going on. You booked it in 2019. So it's been only about, it seems longer. Uh -huh. It's on their fourth season, I was reading, but I mean, how long? It's been what, two and a half? Yes. Two, just about. I'm, I'm trying to do the math as well, because I think yeah. we started filming. We started filming in Might have been 2018. Before, yeah. We started filming in 2018. Yeah. Makes sense. And premiered in 2019. Okay. Um, so. And now it's 2021, 19, yeah. 20, 20, three years. I was like, oh, God. Uh, so really I've been insane. on the show for three years. It's insane because time has flown by so much. And, you know, right. we just got cleared for season four, which is amazing. Yeah. I hope we keep continue and continue. I'm so excited because, you know, yeah. without saying too much, there, the, every season gets better and better. The music gets it. better. The scripts get better. Yeah. You know, um, we're, we're, we're building set structures. Uh, like it's, it's really cool. You can't see them because they're all green. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but it's epic. But, the layers. <laughs> but, but it is, but it, it's epic. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's wild. It, it's yeah. time is flying by. I love yeah. it. And has your family, as far as their feedback, when like you did announce it to your like close friends and family, what was their initial, does your mother, like, do your, like, do you have siblings? I do. I have two sisters. I have an older sister and I have a younger sister. Okay. My, okay. Uh, it's so funny. My younger sister, I called her and I told her. Yeah. And she said, of course you did. <laughs> what, sister? I was what? like, thank you. <laughs> She's like, you and, would. <laughs> and it was, it was, you would get it. Uh, and, you know, that. it's it, again, it's it's one of those things where yeah. they're, they're the most supportive people in my life. Mm -hmm. The only reason I have dance in my life is because of my sisters. Um, the only reason I did theater was because of my older sister. Uh, and so 
I have so much, I, I owe them so, so much. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, last year, last season, my mom, my dad, my sister, my aunt, my, uh, my godmother, she's my aunt, but she's also my godmother, and my cousin oh. were able to come up and they were able to wow. come out on set. And we had this picture of my mom sitting in the thinking chair and we're all huddled around. Ollie was there. Oh um, Ollie is oftentimes on set. So this year oh, is so out. different because of COVID. He's not, he's not allowed on set, but seasons yeah. one and season two, um, he's usually just under the camera or sitting just off camera. And in some episodes he's hiding in the set, uh, just I'm sitting, obsessed. staring at me. Great. Yeah, so if, if you've seen the, the thankful episode where we have the thankful book, and we're yes. sitting at the dinner table. Um, Ollie is literally at my feet, just staring up, just chilling. Um, so he's that hiding make you nervous? all over the set. No, I, I, I when when I first brought him to set, I was super, super nervous. But he okay. is everyone's favorite set dog. Oh, um, you know, I'm. We're also bummed that he can't be that he couldn't be on set this season. But oh you know, God. secretly, I'm so thankful because he's not eating any bacon. That, that dog eats so much bacon. I, his what? cholesterol, like, no human should have that much bacon. They, he, oh, they, no. he always gets treats. Oh, the, my God. The crew God. loves feeding him. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> hopefully he'll live a little bit longer. Yes, um, that is but, so yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and I'm so glad they got to come on because that's not, it, it continues to show what a beautiful environment and set and crew that you're on and involved because it doesn't always happen. Yeah. Sometimes you do meet and you no, get no, no. really tight sets um and they're pretty strict and they run a tight ship depending how long they've been and who's running it um I would only assume the nature of Blue's Clues and what you guys are producing that it would be that kind of environment that it is more playful and and open and free in that sense um that being said back to your parents are they I'm sure they keep you humble in a lot of senses as far as you know when you're booking and doing these things but at the same time do they know like what this they know what this means like how your face and what you choose you filled now like that's crazy Oh, they know. And, you yeah. know, when my mom was on set and we, I, you know, they had to leave again because they were leaving. Yeah. So they were on set for like, they were on set the last day and then they left from, from, from work. Um, and when they were leaving, my mom was crying and she was just like, oh, I'm so proud of you. And, you know, yeah. it was it, like my, my parents came from the Philippines. They yeah. would, and uh, they worked their asses off so that we could go to college um yeah. and you know my 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 mom grew up in like a one room house with with her brothers and sisters she's one of seven my dad is one of six um mm-hmm. and uh they were able to come to the, 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 yeah in the philippines you know wow. and um they were able to come here they worked uh they got citizenship they uh, bought a house. All wow. three of us went to college, and you know, it's it, it's the American dream, and and they yeah. sacrificed, and they and my sisters and so many people sacrificed so that I could be doing this. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm just I'm just so uh, thankful. I am eternally thankful. I love you know? that. Well, clearly it, it hasn't gone over you. It's not been you know you're aware of all these things, and that's beautiful, and it's so deserved and. I'm happy that it's coming back tenfold to them to be able to kind of appreciate all their hard work and seeing it through you that like, look at where it's gotten us and it was so worth it. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh. Are you, uh, are you ready for some of my Spitfire questions? <laughs> oh, geez. Yes. I think, I hope we'll find they're, out. They're Spitfire in a way, but they're, they're like, you can give a long answer. It's not like this or that, if you will, they're not like that. Okay. Um, okay. But I am curious. I wanted to know only because this is, Low key, my favorite part in Blue's Clues was always the condiments. Like I loved paprika, I loved salt, pepper. Oh, yeah. like I was obsessed. <laughs> I always loved them. The yes. mo- I don't yes. know what's wrong with me, but I wanted to know if you were a condiment, what would you be and why? Oh my! Wow! Oh. If I were a condiment, what would I be and why? I funny would... when you say it. <laughs> oh my god! What would I do? I would be. I'm really really into ranch right now so it'd be ranch <laughs> not that I'm, I'm into, into ranch, ranch right now I've been taking a break I'm like from really and I'm hyper focused right yeah <laughs> I'm really trying to hone in on ranch Woo-hoo. so to explain <laughs> yeah let me know uh, we, we start okay 
because we're vegan of like uh, so oh. and i are vegan so like we start so like we made our we started making our own ranch and we're like oh it's oh. so easy you just take sour cream you just take mayonnaise and you just put it in there and just the, the vegan equivalent um, i wouldn't have known and but so I love i've been making ranch and because like we're leaving here yeah i had we had a full tub of sour vegan sour cream and like a full jar of mayonnaise and i was like oh why don't i just make a giant thing of ranch we have so much ranch oh good josh <laughs> it's crazy and i think now i'm like starting to depart from ranch but for right now i have to get through the batch the condiment that i would be yeah yeah yeah. i have to get I'm, you know and the only way is with more pizza so we're just going to be oh, eating pizza until I have, like, my mouth is just full of sores <laughs> i never knew that would have taken me that question would have taken me to where we went but i love that it did now i know something about you i had no idea josh <laughs> hilarious um, i have plenty of ranch come on over plenty of ranch he's here to give i love that come on plant-based people um where do you see yourself in five years and i ask this question only because a you don't have to give me a life plan but i'm curious just because of the life of blues clues and maybe you didn't anticipate this part of your journey but has it created any other creative you know ideas for you of where you'd like yeah. your career to keep going personal what's that for you in five years in five years i would like to continue acting however yes. i would like to uh in five years i would like to be directing uh on, i'd like to be on the other side of the camera yeah i love that i think that would be amazing writing and directing that would be that's yes. my dream oh that's perfect i honestly we already know where it's gonna go so we'll talk to you in five years and we'll be like congrats director josh <laughs> and so and so and so great can't wait <laughs> <laughs> love that thank you <laughs> Yes. And lastly, I want to know, you kind of gave us a little bit earlier, which I enjoyed and okay. the more the be like better here. Um, what is a piece of advice you would give to young actors? And if you want to specifically speak to young Filipino actors, you can, but young actors and general actresses, what would be a piece of advice that you would give them? Maybe it's something you were, you know, you didn't get, you wish you knew and had along your journey. Uh, yes, absolutely. There is, there, there are many things that I could tell you. If you're yeah. in theater, Broadway, is not the mountaintop you know it is mm -hmm. it is a facet it is one okay. part um however uh mm -hmm. if as an actor or whatever you're doing um what you do is not who you are mm -hmm. how you do it is who you are so it doesn't matter if you go from show to show to show to show and you have a list of, of, of broadway credentials and movie credentials if yeah. you if the way that you do those things the way that you treat people the way that you use whatever status you have that is who you are not the list of credentials um yeah. because if you continue to chase more and more credentials to keep valuing yourself mm -hmm. i guarantee you will never be happy um mm -hmm. and this is a, a an industry that is uh incredibly taxing emotionally uh and there's it's mostly rejection mm. um so i would focus on how you do things i mean that's also going to make you a better actor because if you Agreed. just look at if you're if you're looking at lines and you just say the lines yeah you did it um right. and you could get like thunderous applause but mm -hmm. the, what makes this the performance special is your individual way of how you performed it so mm. how you do things is who you are, not what you do. Um, and you, whether it be an actor, a doctor, um, whatever it is, uh, yeah. uh, that's my piece of advice. That's the most, I mean, I just feel like I just got renewed. So I'm like, okay, now I know, Rachel, it has <laughs> nothing to do with all your lack of jobs this year. You're a good makeup artist, girl. <laughs> oh, I you're an it. incredible makeup artist. No, this artist. was not you're to not segue to me. No. <laughs> this is not segueing you, but to, to segue to you a little bit, you are an incredible makeup artist. And I didn't realize how important makeup was because A, I'm a guy. So, you know, guys get a lot of BS passes uh, yes. for like, you know, we don't have to wear makeup. You know, it's not expected that we wear makeup. Even when you're on stage, you don't have to wear makeup. You, you have like foundation. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you don't have to get like, my prep as Josh as Aladdin is far different than oh. Courtney Reed's prep as Jasmine, yes. you know, and you totally. know that personally. Yeah. Um, so 
I didn't realize I being, you know, the ignorant dude didn't realize how important makeup really is until I started um, paying attention. And, you know, if you can pay attention uh, to the things that are around you and you pay so much attention to your work and you're just so lovely to work with that you are an incredible makeup artist and and just a, a fantastic person. So. Guys, Thank you for look having at this me. guy. I can't stand you. You're so incredible. <laughs> I am so glad to see you. It's so nice. I like miss just getting your energy and hanging around you. You are so wonderful, Josh. And I really, truly appreciate you coming on today, even with your busy schedule, everything you have going on, sharing with us everything about Blues Clues and you, all your new endeavors, your journey through it, lots of sound advice. Thank you so much for coming on with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking to you. This is, it's been, probably one of my favorite interviews so thank you oh my god stop i love you thank you thank you guys we are going to put josh's all his information below we're going to have you follow him keep up with blues clues in you and we will see you guys next time